This is DIY Mushroom Tech with Chapter 2.2. Now you will learn how to make a grain run. This is quite easy. Since this project is multilayered, I decided to take an unusual approach. I produced this video in a way that it can also be used as a printout. That means you can use it offline or even use just print some single pages of it. All the design that are shown can also be downloaded. Hey. My name is Daniel, I am from Germany, and I will be your host. Let's make a grain run. Creating grain spawn is fun. It is the easiest part of the whole mushroom process. I use a very simple procedure. In this video I will explain how to master grain spawn. As usual I made four section. First, I will give you the recipe. After we will investigate the process in detail. Third, I will show you key parts with the help of a video. We finish with the bill of material. Before we start, I did put a lot of work into this lecture series. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you want to consider to buy me a coffee? There is a serious reason why I ask. In life there is balance everywhere. Summer and winter, day and night, hot and cold, and so on. It's obviously natural, that taking and giving is also a polarity that needs to be in balance. Only when there is balance can we, as humans, achieve harmony and genuine happiness. That means, if you take something for example from the internet, you should also give something back. Please check for yourself if your life is in balance. If you want, you can support me with a donation. That would be great. You could also support any other good project. Send someone a smile, leave somewhere a nice comment, or just be joyous and spread some love. Let's start with the recipe. You only need 200 gram of rye, and you pour 120 gram of water over it. Obviously, you also need a jar A and a pressure cooker. That is all. Let's investigate further. The process contains five basic steps. First, you prepare the material. Second, you cook the jars. Third, you wait for a complete cool down. Fourth, you inoculate the jar with an agar culture. Fifth, you wait again. So, you start by preparing your jars. Use a funnel to fill in the 200 gram of rye. Do the filling for the whole batch. Pour in 120 gram of fresh water. Repeat it for each jar. The rye should not be fully covered. I always have dry spots on the top. Too much or not enough water will result in slower growth. Close the jars. I will explain in a later slide, how I prepare my lids. This is the easiest and most sustainable way of using jars. This option I do not use anymore. It creates more waste and is pruned for higher contamination. The handling is also more difficult because of the not fixated lid. With jars it does not matter how high you fill in the water. I usually do not fill it beyond the height of the steamer basket. Fill your pressure cooker. Cover the load. This will ensure that you do not have water drops on your jars when you take them R. This is the second best solution. I try to minimize the usage of aluminum foil. Cook the jars. I go for 2 bar for 2 hours. Sometimes 2.5 hours. Gain some experience. You soon will be very comfortable with your equipment. 
If you cook with a too high temperature, you will have disintegrated grain. You do not want that. After reaching the 2 bar, I turn down the energy. To inoculate I use a still air box. The process of the handling will be shown as a video. It is quiet, easy and fast. Wear clean cloths. Use a FFP3 mask. Wear gloves and a cappy. Disinfect your ends with ethanol. Storage can be done without much consideration. I always document my activities. Red for agar. Green for grain. I use rye. Yellow for wood. I use oak. You can also track your gas usage and your cleaning cycles. As you noticed I mostly cook oak. This can be quite easily explained. Agar to grain ratio is 1 to 4. Grain to wood ratio is 1 to 1. With one agar run, one can produce a large amount of agar petri dishes. When I go for grain, I can cook simultaneous four grain jars. As I can only fit two wood bags in my pressure cooker, I do have to cook most of the time sawdust bags. Here you see my shelf for storing. I store grain jars on the top. I use magnetic labels to note the calendar week. One row is always one batch. You can speed up the conquering of the new habitat. You help the mycelium by shaking it. After you have some inoculated spots. This way the mycelium gets evenly distributed within the jar. The jars can be stored in the fridge for month. You can also do grain to grain transfers. I do them only seldomly. I explained above it seems to me more easier to go from agar to grain. Now we will see the process performed. In this video I will show you how to perform the cloning. Always spray your hands. Work as sterile as possible. There are other builds for the still air chamber. Mine works great. No need to complexify the process.
process was correctly performed. No contaminations. Distribution within the jars is also fine. The jars are now fully colonized. I did not shake them. You can now store them in a fridge or use them. Due to the very simplistic cooking without pre-soaking, we have extra wet parts of grain in our jars. That does not matter. It just takes the mycelium a little bit longer to conquer it. It is already covered, but not as thick. The mycelium will later on distribute the water evenly. Time to close this lecture with the bill of materials. You will need all the equipment you have already seen during this video. This slide serves as a checklist. All things are easily bought local or sourced via eBay, Amazon, or AliExpress. These are the jars I use. Make sure you have fall jars. You need to get the grain out. That can sometime become tricky after long time colonization. Filter pad. It is manly used to filter aquarium water. You need to work a little bit to create the modified lids for the jars. The process is straightforward. Drill a hole, deburr the hole and put as much filter pad in as possible. To avoid contamination, you need to trim the filter pad into shape afterwards. Wet jars are the second best option. I would not go for it. But they do also work. I now have nearly finished to talk about all the relevant points. You should consider, if you have something you want to share. Do you have a different, maybe a better recipe for grain spawn? Please share it with your fellow man. Remember to be kind. The world out there is hard enough as it is. Spread some love. In the next lecture we will investigate sawdust span. 
For this we will use oak wood. Stay with me it will be quite interesting. Thank you, for spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed it, and even learned something. I am looking forward to see you soon again. Happy Grain Inoculating